Okay. Okay. Uh, we'll we'll start now uh, with the next talk by Jie Sheng Zhang. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks for the invitation and thanks for this organization. So today I'm going to talk about a recent work with Daniel Laker about the local equation of such uh, interact, interacting diffusions on regular trees, which were connected to the Gibbs measure. So uh, you can see I have like 22 slides. I will probably not cover all of them, but I will most mostly cover the first part. Basically, uh, describe the uh, introduce this interacting diffusion on the regular trees and how it's connected to the Gibbs measure, and we will introduce how we localize this interacting diffusion here. Okay. So uh, we are working on this interacting diffusion on infinite regular trees. Basically, this infinite regular trees means that for each edge, we have like the, uh, for each vertex, we have the edges. And this is a picture for D equal to three. And, and actually when D is equal to two, you can just see this G as the integer line. So the interaction, the interacting diffusion we are working with is such CD, uh, SD system here. So basically this DXV, or depending on, this u prime of x v and the, inter the interacting part will be uh, determined by this w prime of x v minus x u for each u that is connected to this v in this graph. And we will have a constant diffusion here. And also we work on two even functions u and w. So uh, we will focus on the homogeneous stationary measure mu on this SD system, which is also a Markov chain on G. I will explain the homogeneity and the Markov chain in a while, but I will first show, I will first explain why this stationary measure mu will correspond to some Gibbs measure. Okay, so let's take d equal to two as an example. Basically this g is just some integer line. Uh, we can just rewrite the system as dxi is equal to minus u prime of xi minus this w prime, which is only depending on xi minus xi plus one and xi minus xi minus one here. And if we, if we calculate the conditional distribution on the stationary density, then we can show that uh, the, the conditional density of X minus N given everything else will have this following, uh, will have this following form in the sense that it will depending actually only on X minus, uh, minus N minus one and X N plus one in the sense that it will have a Gibson, uh, Gibson specification. So basically, this is a Markov Gibson specification on C. And actually, more precisely, for every stationary mu, uh, stationary mu of this system here, this will form a Gibbs measure on the Z. And every Gibbs measure on the Z will actually give a stationary solution of such mu with this specification. And so let's go on for the homogeneity and Markov chain properties. So this homogeneity means that this mu is environment under any automorphism of this tree. And the Markov chain property, let's still take D, as, D equal to two as an example, which means that when we are given some Xi, then everything happened in the left is independent of everything happening in the right. More generally, for every Xi in the infinite tree, if we like remove this Xi, it will split into two uh, subtrees. And these two subtrees were conditionally independent given, this, given, given the point we remove. So the thing is this uniqueness of this Mar uh, Markov Gibbs measure will correspond to the uniqueness of the Gibbs measure in some way. So basically, if we only have finite states, these things are equivalent. Uh, if it's not, it's not too clear, but it's actually, uh, it, it indeed gives some like intuition for us to like how, why do we need to understand this uniqueness of this Markov Gibbs measure? And also these two properties will be crucial to deduce our local equation, which I'll explain in, in a minute. Yeah, so this conclude the intro introduction of interacting diffusion here, and then I will go on for this local equation. So the localization means that we want to, so basically uh, in, in the previous slides, we're working on an infinite dimensional system interacting diffusion here. And the localization is that we want to find a finite dimensional SDE whose stationary solution can characterize this, this infinite system here. So this infinite system I rewrite it here. And our tool would be the mimicking theorem. So this is the infinite system we are working on. And uh, I would like take one minute to explain this mimicking theorem. So basically, if we only have some 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 uh, some SD dxt equal to bt dt plus some constants 
constant diffusion here, well, we want to mimicking this mimicking this process in the sense that we so for this bt this is uh, it is not necessarily a function of xt but actually we can like do this conditional expectation here to make it as a function of xt and then this new uh, sde here would mimic the previous one in the sense that we somehow project the actual actual randomness of bt with respect to this xt and we will get the same uh, marginal distribution here so the key point is that we somehow take conditional expectation of the drift, at least when the sigma is a constant here. This is the conditional expectation. So using this mimicking theorem, we again take this D as an example, and we consider this X0 and X1 mimicked by this XT and YT. So in general, this X0 and X1 will depend on, first, it will depend on X1, it will depend on x, uh, x0, x1, and it will also depend on this x2 and x minus 1 here. So this x2 and x minus 1 are, uh, are indeed the thing we want to like project, project away. So basically this mimicked, uh, this mimicked diffusion would be dxt. Again, we have some other like brown driven by some other brown emotion. And this, uh, like previously it would be u prime of x0, but we will use xt to mimic this x0. And this is x0 minus uh, x1. We will use xt minus yt to, to project it, to, to represent that. And the other part would involve a conditional expectation in the sense that there's, there is x0 and x minus 1, which cannot be ex exactly written as some function of x0 and x1. But we can write it in terms of the conditional expectation of uh, w prime of x0 minus x minus 1 given x0 and x1. So this is how this conditional expectation shows up in this diffusion. And also for dy, we'll have the similar thing. So the rest of it is to calculate what is this conditional expectation here. And this is how our homogeneity and Markov property shows up. So the observation here is that, so we are considered this conditional expectation of x0 and x1 given x0 and x1. Sorry, x0 and x minus 1 given x0 and x1. So by, uh, by the Markov property, since they're like given x0, x1 minus one and x1 are independent. So this is just given x0 equal to xt. And by the homogeneity, this at the joint density of x0 and x minus one should be the joint density of x0 and x1. And by this mimicking term, we know that this, this is equal to w prime of xt minus yt given xt since we mimic x0 and x1 by xt and yt here. Okay, so this is the, this is the whole procedure of how we deal with this, con this conditional expectation. And generally when we take regular tree with degree d, we will have xt square root some brown emotion driven and u prime xt, u, w prime xt minus yt as usual. And since we have like the extra d minus one address, we will have this d minus one times this conditional expectation, which can be represented as w prime of xt minus yt given xt. And the same thing happened for this d minus one, uh, sorry, this thing happened for this uh, yt here. So the thing I explained before somehow tells us away from the infinite system going to this local equation. And the natural question is that if we are given some local equation here, can we reconstruct the re reconstruct the whole uh, at least the stationary solution for the at least the stationary solution for the uh, original system here? And I want to stop here just like for one, 30 seconds to say that this is actually a like a first it's a finite dimensional SD system, and this is a marking wasserf type of uh, SD since you can see that, that there is a conditional expectation or conditional distributions involving in the coefficients. And also we can understand this problem by, our, by the PDE form, basically writing out a nonlinear PDE here. And actually we use, so in our applications, we use a lot of PDE method to deduce the application. Uh, so yeah, so this is the local, this, so, so for now we just write out the local equation and our main results would be so these are the local equation and the interacting diffusion on the regular trees. I just write them again. So this local equation is just a two dimensional case. And in here, this is an infinite dimensional case. And the main result is that there is a one-to-one -one correspond 
correspondence between the uh, symmetric stationary solution of xt and yt and the homogeneous Markov stationary solution of this interacting diffusion on deregular trees. And uh, for every like connected, connected, uh, connected edges here, this xvt and xut will have the same distribution of xt and yt. So this is our main results, at least according to the localization part. Yeah, uh, and, <clears throat> and I see I have some other time, so I will explain a little bit about our applications here. So there are basically two applications. The first one is to give a new way to calculate the spectrum or more precisely to calculate the resolvent, which is corresponding to the Kasten mckay law. And the other part is about the phase transition, which like corresponding to the existence and uniqueness of the local equation. Yeah, so for the resolvent here, uh, yeah, just given, given, some, given some countably local, locally finite graph V, we can have an uh, adjacent operator A, and the goal is basically to calculate the resolvent of node V, which is defined by FV of Z. This is this uh, EV and ZI minus A inverse of EV. So actually in, in M regular tree case, this FV will be like uh, the same. So this FV will not depending on this V in the sense that for every V, this, this is the same function here. So we first see this one in finite dimensional case. Basically, if we consider an OU, a finite OU process, this dxt minus this zi minus axt plus some uh, brown, brown motion, and we know the stationary solution would satisfy this like normal distribution. And therefore, uh, this term here, so actually this one would be the covariance of this xt, and therefore this ev of this matrix ev would just be the expected, the, basically the variance of x v of t. So this is in finite dimensional case. And actually when, when we consider an M, uh, when we consider an infinite deregular tree, when we set this u, u and w such that basically the, the, the drift will be just some linear term of x t, which co the corresponding local equation can be also written as returning this term. We will also expect that this f f v of z would be equal to this like in the infinite in the infinite system this is x v of t squared and in the local equation here we we, we expect that this is just the virus of x t of one explicit x t here and solving as you can see solving this equation at least guessing one solution of this this equation is somehow uh, easier than to calculate the distribution of this one since we don't have a like basically an infinite matrix there or the, 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 the inverse of an infinite matrix. And we will guess the stationary solution of x, t, y, t by some Gaussian distribution with mean zero. And therefore the local equation will, so basically if we guess this x, t, y, t be a joint Gaussian, this one will also be a linear, linear function of x, t. And in total, this will give us a finite uh, OU process, which will give us like, this is a matrix. This is just two times two matrix times x, t, y, t plus some Brown motion. And just, just, just remember that the, uh, the, the stationary solution of some like linear, like all your process will satisfy this one times this one is just some identity. We can solve in this sigma square by Z and actually we will get the same results as Kasten and McKay. So this is one application here. Maybe, and, maybe yeah. let's not do the other one because I think yeah, we're running. Yeah. Okay, so uh, very nice talk. There's time for questions, for maybe one question as we transition to the next uh, set of slides. And Christopher, maybe you can put yours up while we're doing that. I'm going to stop the recording.